Uh, thank y'all so much for that, that great singing. And it is so special. And I want to take just a, a few moments tonight and, and talk about something. Uh, you know, go ahead and open your Bible to the book of Philippians. Philippians, the fourth chapter, and uh, and I was thinking as, as we were talking tonight, and uh, it has just really struck me today of uh, the situation that the world is in. And we, the song we were singing and all, and uh, it just has me assured that we are headed to the end times. Now, I can't give you a date or anything. The end times may be 50 years or it may be 50 minutes, but uh, it's closer now than it has ever been. That's right. And so, as you know, I've always entitled my message, and tonight I entitled it very simply, Rejoice in the Lord always. Mm -hmm. And again I say, Rejoice. Mm -hmm. And we find that in, in Philippians, uh, the fourth chapter. And I, I see here as Paul's writing, uh, he's writing from a prison cell, and there in that prison cell, he wrote this uh, epistle of joy. A pistol of joy to the members of a congregation in, in another city. A city where he had been in prison. And so here he was now over here, and so he's writing this letter. And so we see here after he had been beaten with many stripes, that Paul and Silas were able to, to experience the joy of worship in the midst of the unfavorable consequences and circumstances. And, and notice here in Acts 16, verse 25 and 26, where what Luke did, he reported that he wrote there, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them and though ever there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And there in that prison as it was shaken and immediately all the doors, every door in the prison swung open. And everyone's hands were loosened. They had the handcuffs or not handcuffs as we know them, but tied out or they did it in there. All of them just fell off. Hmm. Now, having described that, don't you find it rather surprising to find a reason for the rejoice in the Lord coming from, from one who was in prison for his faith. So here are these people that they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew what they knew. But yet we see here where Paul, time after time, he urged the believers in Philippi to rejoice. What? I'm here in, the, in prison. How am I going to rejoice? Well, you don't have grits for breakfast. No, hey, uh, we want you to rejoice. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice in him. But uh, here, having said that, I, I want you to, to see something here. I want you to see what he reveals to us. The very source of joy. And he encounters us and encourages us to to respond to this source of joy, no matter what the situation is. So he's recommended here 
a uh, positive mental attitude that's characterized by optimism and hope amid all these circumstances, there may not be favor. But here the Philippians, he said you needed this exhortation. exhortation. And I thought about that. And we need it today. If any time in the history of our lifetime, we need that encouragement, that exhortation. Mm -hmm. You know, we have something to rejoice over and to be glad because Jesus desired that his disciples experience the, the fullness of joy. And it is so easy to, to wake up and we turn on the news and we hear all this stuff. It was worse than when we went to bed. And it's so easy to live a life of woe is me. But no, there is victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it's coming, and it's coming very, very soon. And so the world needs a religion of joy. And so many people today are living in a life of defeat. Woe is me. Woe is me. And uh, because what they do, they spend their whole lifetime looking for joy and happiness, but they're looking at all in the wrong places. Uh, Paul didn't say, oh, you got good health. Rejoice in that. Rejoice in your in your health. You know your health can fail. Most every one of us can experience that. Yeah. And Paul didn't say rejoice in your wealth. Now they may be somebody different than uh, this classification, but he said rejoice in your health. He never once said rejoice in your wealth. You may not have wealth, and even if you do, you could lose it. There are worlds of people that can testify to losing their wealth. And Paul didn't say rejoice in your friends. As great as they are, sometimes the friends just disappoint. Most of us have had that experience. Some of them love to death, but they disappoint us. Rejoice, he didn't say that. He did not say rejoice in your family. Sometimes your family can be a source of unhappiness. But here's what, what Paul said. He said rejoice in the Lord. How often? always. He said, and again, I say rejoice. And so he encouraged us to make a spiritual inventory of that which gives life meaning and purpose. And so then he, he urged us. He said, truly value that which is valuable and to find our greatest satisfaction will be in our relationship with God. I, I've never experienced this, but I'll say this, that I, to have a relationship with God without a penny in your pocket is still a relationship with God. And uh, so let us rejoice in the Lord's person. The God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is, is a moral God. He's a God of integrity. He's characterized by a righteousness and, and dependability. But you know what? He never makes a mistake and will never conduct himself in such a way as to 
make us disappoint because he is a God of holiness and of love and so having said that let us rejoice that he is the kind of God that he is and then let us rejoice in, in the Lord's purpose you see all of God's purposes of love and and uh, he, he deals with us always from a period of love. He deals with us according to, to his perfect wisdom. Because he knows our past. But even more than that, he knows our future. He knows our, what we're going to do right now. He knows what we're going to do in the city. But he knows our future. He can tell us three weeks from now, three months, or ten minutes from now. There is no evil is in him. No selfishness is, is in his purpose toward us. God's will is that none of us should perish, but that all of us should experience life in its fullness. And so, Let's rejoice there in the Lord's promises. You know, the Bible's a book that contains so many promises from the Father God to his children, which are us. God has promised so much. And it, we are to respond to them in faith and obedience and and by that i'm talking about he when he uplifts us he enriches us and so when that happens then we need to rejoice in the lord's power our god is no weak he is a creator god and a sustaining lord amen when you say God, you say everything that the world needs to know. He provides all good things for us. In a strength, we can resist evil. And we can become what he wants us to be. And achieve what he wants us to do. And ain't that good news? Amen. You know, sometimes we just don't realize really how great our God is. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times we go through life and, Lord, you know I really need this. Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't get that brand new Buick. <laughs> you know, if I don't do this and do that, I, you know, I'm going to be an outcast and all this stuff. But God knew that before you asked him for it. And he provides every good thing for us. And it's in his strength that we can resist. And we can become, at that time, what he wants us to be. And ain't that good news. Mm -hmm. So let's rejoice in God's inexhaustible spiritual power. God's never going to run out of strength or, or a way to help us. Which, by the way, is available to all that will seek you. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Amen. Plus nothing and minus nothing. And if, let's rejoice in the Lord's abiding presence. You know, so many people don't realize that the Lord brought him with He came with us. Amen. And he'll leave with us. Amen. And he'll protect us. And he'll guide you. And so let's rejoice in the Lord's abiding presence. Our Lord promised his disciples. He said, I'll be with you at all times, in all circumstances, for how long? To the very end of the age. That's a long time. 
Now, you can read that again in Matthew 28, 20. If you want to, if you don't believe it's a sin, you can underline it. Stop it. He's the God who has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. It is absolutely impossible for us to drift beyond the range of his loving care. We can never get out from under his loving care. So while I'm talking about it, let me give you some homework. Before you go to sleep tonight, let me encourage you to, to read Psalms 139. 139. Then so let us rejoice in the Lord's provision. God has provided for, for the forgiveness of all of our sins in the past. And he provides for our deepest needs in the present. And further than that, he promised to provide a home at the end of the way. Somebody look at John 14, verse 1 through 3. John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. You know, so there's a strong possibility that tonight we could be with the Lord. Could be. He's coming. And uh, we're going up with him. And there's so many things in life that can cause us to to become downcast and disappointed and uh, discouraged and upset and why me more than all mm -hmm. of these things. But having said that, we don't want to get disappointed and discouraged. We must believe this we search for happiness and joy in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. When the Lord is the basis for our hopes for the future, we will find the source of unending joy. This is what Paul said. Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. And again, I say, Rejoice. And so, let me close by saying this. As you rejoice in the Lord, something will happen. You will find your life to be much more meaningful. And you also find life to be more productive as you seek to minister to others. And so as we do that, as we go, we minister to others. Until you do it, you don't know what the ministry really is. That's right. How great it is. And to know that somebody is going to be in heaven because you pointed the way. Hallelujah. And 
you know, and I, I don't know this, but I just kind of believe that when I get to heaven, somebody will say, I'm here because of you. You know? Yeah. So, here, you pray a benediction. Just before we, we pray, I, I, you know, you were looking in Philippians 4, and it, I've been sitting here thinking about the things that are going on. And verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need yes. according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, yes, go ahead, Jim. I just, I, can I just say one yeah. thing real quick? I don't know if you know, but Chris Christopherson, you know, is a great country music uh, singer and writer. And if you read anything about his life or anything, he was saved in Johnny Cash's church. And he was propelled down the aisle and was on the altar and didn't even realize why or what happened. And he talks about what happened to him when he accepted Jesus Christ. And the reason that I bring it up is because in his last few weeks, and because he died, his songs are on Facebook over and over and over. And the song that he wrote called Why Me, Lord? Why Me? That. And at this particular time in our life, all of a sudden, his music is everywhere, and that song, I just see it uh, over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so, so he was a celebrity who loved the Lord Jesus Christ, and people, he's witnessing to people right now. And that song was written in the 80s, mm -hmm. and yet that's being played out right now. And so the Lord has a way of like bringing the word to people even when they don't realize they're getting it. And I just, I just wanted to say yeah. that. Why me, Lord? What did I ever do? Yes. To deserve. No, 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 no. I sang that. I can't hold it anymore. Beautiful song. Father God, we come to you right now, Lord, just thanking you, praising you, Father, knowing that here you are in our midst sitting right here beside us. Thy Holy Spirit within us. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for all you're doing. Sometimes we grumble. Sometimes we wonder. But Father, your word says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And Father, we believe in every word that's written. Yes. And Lord, we ask now that you would continue to guide us and direct us into those paths of the people that we need to speak to and share your love with them. Father, we thank you for that opportunity. Give us the words to say, be bold. As we open our mouth, the Holy Spirit speak it through. Father, we thank you for that. Keep us safe, Lord. Bring us back at the appointed time. And let us share always your love with all we seek and come in contact with. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.